Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, and get ready for Gnosis. Well, you know, the question comes up frequently, um, and it's difficult to put down exact training for people uh, in terms of where they find it initially, but uh, what's interesting is, uh, what is the secrets to extreme abilities and manifesting? Well, you know, we have discovered all of those that are available, and we're working on some, of course, uh, super manifestation um, capacities using consciousness technologies, radionic machines, etc., which we feel is the ultimate way to manifest, but in more in a synergistic combination way as well. Now, what are these things? Now, you know, I've spent years trying to figure out, well, what are the keys to manifesting? Uh, and um, it all comes back to the same old thing, which uh, has been... Um, out there for some time in very poor fashions. You know, people seem to understand uh, the mental states, visualization, other things, but they really don't because uh, the visualization and other things that people are taught are all wrong. So um, they are giving you very fractured and old style manifestations and how do you visualize, etc. So. And all of these things require a minimal practice. Now, it doesn't take a lot of work. And um, what I've also discovered over the years is that the more you, time you spend on something uh, in terms of in one sitting is actually negative. What's critical is to do things often for short periods of time. And I go over this and I will keep repeating this because, you know, as new people and other people uh, come in, or even the older people that have been around for a while, um, because things change somewhat, but uh, they are lost. Well, the point is it isn't lost and we want to get this clarified once and for all. Now, the key to training is plain and simple. First of all, you do things at high enthusiastic levels. I feel great. I'm psyched up. I feel good. Well, you know, anytime we do something with that kind of empowered uh, attitude, and this isn't positive thinking, it's positive energetic empowerment, meaning I'm ready to go. You're psyched. You're in it. Very, very important. So so if you do something, I don't feel good, I'm tired, it's after work, I got to do this. Well, you do that attitude and you're going to produce very little energy. So the key to everything is, is to make sure when you approach something, you're feeling good, you're energetic, you're enthusiastic of what you're doing. Now, uh, then you want to do whatever you're going to do, which should be some sort of practice, um, a cult gym, mind gym type practice. Um, and you do that for short periods of time and you do it often. That's the key to everything. Now, you also need to be in the proper frame of mind. So what does everything start off with? Well, everything starts off with mind control. This is called centering. So if you're thinking about what you got to go on, if you're hungry, if you're depressed, other, if you're not in the right mental state, you will fail, plain and simple. Your practices will be mediocre. And sometimes you got to push yourself through doing that. But centering techniques can be done in a very short period of time. Once you do them often, uh, you can get into a centered state of mind. Now, centering is not meditative. It's not a meditative state. It's an active brain state that is under 100% control. It's important to understand that. A lot of people think they have to meditate. Well, you know, meditation is good and bad. Uh, for what we're trying to do of, of empowerment, uh, you don't really want to be in a meditative state because that's not necessarily an empowered state. Now, meditation is supposed to bring peace of mind, clear thoughts, etc. Yeah, otherwise called centering that you learn to get into quickly. So your practices on a daily basis should be anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how you feel that day. Now, there's a basic centering, which is talked about in the book, which is done fairly quickly. And then there's the longer centering, where you're doing some type of energetic yoga positions that kind of get the flow going better. Now, you don't do these uh, super slow and take long periods of time. Generally, you can get through the body movements and the centering within 20 minutes. And that's a really short period of time. Um, and then you are put in a state that should carry you for the all, to the entire day until you do your centering again. This means you're making the right decisions and you're ready to do other work. Now, once you're in that brain state, 
that you're not thinking about 50 other things, then you uh, go into using a cold gym. And a cold gym is about, first of all, shifting again. You want to make sure, even though you're centered, that you clear your mind using some sort of tool, puzzle, etc., to concentrate using a bit of concentration. Um, and of course, these are terms that everybody misunderstands. What's kind? Con- well, you got to be very concentrated. Well, yes and no. The more you concentrate, the more you go into the common mind, which is going to take you back to the common problems. To I'm hungry. I want to screw. What's on TV? Oh, there's a beer in the fridge. This is what you're going to, when you concentrate. So you're going to be careful. You want to switch energy. So that's why you use a shifting tool. These are often mind puzzles, tubes where you concentrate on. And you use these for about three minutes. Um, and then you're shifted over. Now, you can use them a little longer. You can use them a little shorter. It depends. But, you know, long periods of time of doing anything is not productive. This has been one of the um, problems that have always confused people. That Well, I have to meditate for a long period of time. Why? So you don't have to do anything for you. You should be at a point that once you go through the mechanics of it, because it's going to take you longer when you learn centering, the long centering, doing the physical exercises, because you go, what do I do next? This is going to delay you. But once you learn it, you should be able to go through it at a fairly decent pace without making it a western type exercise where you're uh, moving muscles so you want to do it at a nice slow uh, pace uh, to get it done so that slows you down but once you understand it you should be able to get through it you're not trying to perfect it by doing it oh i got to do it longer and stretch out no that comes after you do exercises for a few weeks you just normally stress out just like you normally start to concentrate better so all this stuff of uh, that you have to do things for any period of time is nonsense. So that means you're not doing it right. Does an hour of meditation better than 15 minutes of high enthusiastic meditation or even five minutes? Is it? Based on what? Based on cultures that taught this a thousand years ago that really had nothing to do after sun up when they planted the crops or did whatever they've done now they have all day so let's spend two hours meditating and this achieves something well this happened of course in the uh tibetan schools uh where they found the monks were just a bunch of sloppy lazy people that did nothing because they meditated all day now this is the gossip of how um Kung Fu came into Uh, the head of the monastery found all these fat, lazy, fatigued monks who all they did was sit in postures all day and taught them how to use, uh, how to fight, how to do martial arts because they were also under threat. So, um, so it doesn't. Does sitting in a chair all day help you physically? Well, no. I mean, everybody understands you have to go out and do some physical exercise. Do you need to work out for two hours? No, not really. It's not really effective. If you do any kind of workouts, you know, if you do 20 minutes a day of physical exercise, that's plenty. Matter of fact, human beings are not meant to exercise for long periods of time. Yeah, it looks good to build muscles and everything, but it's not necessarily good for your body. That's a cosmetic sexual ego thing. It has nothing to do with being physically fit, which a lot has to do with obviously moving strenuously for short periods of time, but also has a lot to do with where your head's at, what you're eating. All these things are important. So let's get away from all this long-term things. Nobody has the concentration levels now, but I don't think it's even effective. Do people have the time? Do they want to? It becomes a stressed out situation. You ought to be doing other activities instead of spending all this time working endlessly in one area. Now, if you do things consistently for short periods of time, when you're ready to do it again, meaning, okay, I'm enthusiastic, I want to do it again, click. You're in the uh, transferred consciousness instantly. That's the key. So it's not building up to everything. This is nonsense. So we need to understand that. The other thing that people don't understand is there's two key things that you have to practice and work on. And one of them, of course, is visualization. And it's not getting it out of a book. 
You have to learn to visualize and sense using a tool. This is touching things and so forth. I have several of these tools that I've designed in recent years and now they are for sale. If you don't have these, you're not building your empowerments to the correct level. Plain and simple. Here again, you need to do visualizations every day for about five to 10 minutes along with your brain gym work. Again, five to 10 minutes. So you're looking at anywhere from 20 minutes to 40 minutes totally a day. But you know, the point is we all have to do that. We waste hours a day doing stuff because we're just too mentally drained and tired. So we just don't do nothing. We look at TV, we go to the internet, we mess around, we read on the toilet for an hour. I mean, the things that we do to burn time because we're just too tired to do anything else. So the point is putting in 40 minutes to an hour a day is nothing. And as I said, learn to budget your time. It's also good to try and do things at the same time because this conditions your mind as well. Well, it's 2 o'clock. I'm in the zone already. Now, just doing that is a condition factor that's important. You also want to do is not only have a visualization tool, you want to have a mind gym kit. Now, we have the Every Man's Mind Gym Kit. If you're not using this, you are really missing the boat. Um, there are many little tools that you can use, but we've put all the major things there together. ESP cards, automatic dice rollers, uh, psychic wheels you turn with your mind, and other fascinating little things. Even a fun little magic trick that you can use uh, either psychically or use it as a magic trick. And you want to make sure you are that empowered person. You want to make sure that when you get those uh, negativity monkey heads that like to attack all these things based in their pseudo-intellectual qualities, that you produce some phenomena that they don't quite understand. That's right. Become a magician, make money, and press your friends. And unfortunately... Well, maybe someday you can make 150 million like all the other illusionists do that trick and uh, trick people and treat them like scum and laugh at them behind their backs. So the whole idea is that this is critical. All the tools you need are there, including a shifting tool, a special mind puzzle. It's all in that kit. If you don't have that kit, you're not manifesting properly. Now, all the skills that you need are still based in pumping psychic muscle. If you don't pump psychic iron, so to speak, you're not going to get anywhere. Oh, you're just going to go to techniques. Well, we have the finest techniques available. These are written in books by Kenyatta Long, who has collected and spent his many, many years putting all these techniques together. They are fabulous. They are work extremely well as techniques. But and these are the best ones to use. They're also based in books that are empowered. They have sigils in them that stimulate the psychic centers within your mind by just putting a photograph in the book. I mean, these are very special texts. And don't ever confuse them that this is some piece of garbage, uh, mass-marketed occult book uh, by the goofball Llewellyn and all these other idiots out there that make a bunch of garbage books, which are nothing more than print on a page. And usually the page paper they use is garbage on top of it. These are oversized, professionally printed with the best equipment possible, full color uh, sigil, sealed energetic talisman book. So don't ever get this confused with the garbage that's on the market today. So they're not just technique books, not only the best technique books, they're empowered books. After all, are you an occult manifesting scientist or not? You're going to buy yourself a $10 or $15, a $5 piece of garbage book produced by people that know nothing? That is completely and totally unempowered, mass produced in black and white? Oh my God, are these ignorant buffoonish slobs. So, IGUS knows what they're doing. We've been doing it for 40 years. Our knowledge goes back thousands of years and even goes ahead thousands of years. All time is circular. But you have to be connected with the right people. And you're in a world that connects you with the losers. They want you to fail. They want you to go to crap publishers and the garbage that they offer. So, 
You need to understand that. So the techniques are there. You don't need any other technique books, and you certainly don't need to get that garbage because it's a few dollars cheaper. These are lifetime tools. They also uh, come with, or you can obtain additionally, these scalar energy disks, which put very strong energies in your environment and uh, are used as particular strong sigils you place your photograph on. This is groundbreaking technology. Anyone that's not using this is a fool and they are disempowered. I meet very, very few people that have any kind of empowerment. Very few people that can manifest anything. Of course, all of these people are non-IGOS customers. They're all people going to goofball cults, buying crap books, buying uh, leather books or turds lap wrapped in leather uh, produced by pseudo-intellectual, mostly Satanists. It's a really a joke. But, you know, part of your path in life is to figure out who is empowered, who is the best, and how to empower yourself. If you are trapped into it because you don't want to spend a little extra money for a lifetime tool, and remember that, everything IGS produces is a lifetime tool. You're not going to put it on your shelf and forget it or maybe read it again another 10 years. You're going to use it all the time to the day that you die. And I recommend you have it put in your coffin or put in your um sarcophagus or whatever, even if you are cremated, you should have your books cremated with you or give it to a treasured family member. This is the type of quality advanced tools only IGOS offers. Now, I don't know if people really get that. You want to buy this crap you see everywhere, these garbage books, these turds wrapped in leather by fools. Well, you're going to get what all that adds up to. And it adds up to a big, giant nothing. So, so remember that. But it's the process you need to understand. First of all, you have to be able to center. You've got to control your mind. Does that make sense? Of course it does. Oh, I'm trying to be powerful, but I'm thinking about going to In-N-Out Burger. So the point is you're, you're not going to do anything that way. Your mind is confused. You're going into primitive thoughts. Me want food. Well, it's not going to work. You better be centered. Now that you're centered, what do you do? Well, you have to empower yourself. If you haven't opened up and connected to the streams of empowerment that are in the cosmos by using amulets and other things, but you have to do occult gym practices. If you can't sense a color that's on a card, if you can't sense the number on a dice, if you can't do any of these simple things, you don't have the ability to manifest. It's as simple as that. Now, everybody wants to jump ahead to techniques. Now, it's a hard way to learn is using techniques to develop a, a mind gym techniques. It's just the wrong way to do it. So, you just, you know, you could go out and just play it. Let's say you're a basketball. You can just go out and play basketball, and that kind of teaches you. But the bottom line is you're supposed to learn basketball, learn how to dribble, learn how to shoot from different positions, different ways from the basket. That's what you do first, then you play the game. Otherwise, a cult gym, then you do the techniques, which is the game. Hopefully, everybody gets that. Now, if you do all these things, you are guaranteed to be empowered. There's never fails. It never has ever failed. Nobody who's followed an IGS system has ever failed completely. Like with everything, some people excel. You know, why is some people really good at basketball and other ones practice all the time and they're mediocre? That's just how life is. But if you do enough of the practice, you're still going to be a good basketball player. Whether you be a star is kind of unknown. Why? You have a natural ability, and that's something that comes from high-level empowerments that are kind of natural. But everybody can play basketball well and actually good if they practice. So, and of course, that's where it starts. No star basketball player ever just played basketball. Oh, well, here's the ball. Well, what do you do with it? I don't know. No, what well, you got to learn the game. You got to practice. So it's very important, and this is where visualization comes in. Learn your sensing. Learn to visualize. It's the critical component of occult gym practices. So remember, there are these things that are connected here centering, mind gym, and of course these are all laid out in the books, 
And of course, part of the Mind Gym is get yourself an everyman side kit. Get yourself one of the visualization tools. Critical. These ought to be used even throughout your day, the visualization tools. These are things where you reach in a box and you feel what's in there. Well, what is in there? What color is it? This is a very critical aspect of using these tools, which will bring you up to very high levels. Visualization isn't about using mind power. It's about using sensing power. So it's all combined together. These are the secrets. This works. It's guaranteed. You don't do this. Well, that's your problem. You're not really serious. So I can't stress this enough. Then you get into the technique books. And this is a fun area of techniques because we have technique books on all sorts of traditions. What do you, you like Babylonians? We got it. How about Asian magic? We got it. Samurais, runes, you name it, we've got it. How about just regular stuff? Protection, money drawing, basic healing. Kenyatta Long has put this all together in fantastic books. They're all there. They're written well, they're fun, they're clear, and they're empowered and lifetime tools. Do you get that? It's lifetime tools. You want to get faster empowerment? You want to reach high levels? Why do you think we have amulets? Amulets connect you to these empowerment streams. Empowerment doesn't come from inside of you. It doesn't come from your head. It doesn't come from your chakras. It doesn't come from you personally. You are nothing but a channel. You have to draw energies into you. This is where all empowerment comes from. You are the machine. You are the basic computer. Let's put it that way to kind of clarify, but I don't believe humans are computers. But what is a computer without a program, without software? Nothing, is it really? It's just, it's just a dead box with a bunch of components in it. What makes a computer valuable? the software. Is the software built into the computer? Well, not really. Computers are built to compute, to take software and run it to do something. And that's what you are. You're an empty, vacant computer. You need to add software to it. That's what amulets are for. That's what scalar energy disks are for. That's what you are, and you need to understand that. You are an empty vessel that needs to, ch to channel in whatever you're looking for, depending on some of your likes and dislikes. Some people prefer certain traditions over others. They feel linked to it because of their background, their culture, their race. Now, it's something not to get trapped into, but generally everybody does that. And when people uh, drop away from common belief systems, they tend to go back to their cultural roots. Uh, they tend to think, well, gee, I'm a uh, Celt, so I'm going to go back to Celtism. Uh, you know, I'm African, I'm going to go back to the African religions. This is normal, and I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with it. You feel centered in that. But you have to learn to give up the physical body in general, because these are just trappings of an illusion that we live in. But, you know, we live in a physical society. So you can't go around telling people, well, I ain't black when you're black. Oh, I'm not black. Well, look in the mirror, guy. You're black. So you, you, you do have a problem that you have to deal with that with society. But ultimately, there may be some empowerments there for you from a DNA and cultural background. So people tend to like that. Um, and that's something to look into. But the point is, is that you don't want to limit yourself to that. Um, so whatever culture you come from, maybe you want to uh, use Mexican magic. Maybe you want to use Asian magic. All of this, we are kind of a universal energy force. We, I consider myself a citizen of the planet, not of any particular country, state, or uh, racial background. So you need to think that as well. But we have all the techniques there. It's brimming. You don't need anything else. And you certainly don't need uh, techniques from incompetent, poorly trained people that are not connected to the streams of empowerment they need. Kenyatta Law is. And all these books are empowered by the individual, the organization, and the cosmic energies connected to us. It's all part of the process. A very important process uh, that you need to understand. After all, we're dealing with higher forms of energy, not common garbage technologies that people are pushing on you. As I've mentioned, these garbage uh, uh, publishers, the common thinking people, 
uh, that are out there, the Tony Robbins and their groups. Well, I mean, this stuff is all baby steps, but there's no great empowerment there. They're trying to wake you up with motivations and simple little brain tricks uh, that are done for the average common person that results with kind of bad results in general, even though the teachings are basically okay, but they're still kindergarten. We're graduate work. We give you empowerments. We help you. We have the tools like nobody else does. Our products are unique and empowered and proven with years and years of use. We've taken, we've cherry picked everything and give you the best. Now, where everyone goes from there, well, is, you know, other questions, everybody wants to have extreme abilities. Well, you know, this is possible. You can do a lot of things depending on how much time and energy you want to put into it, but there are no simple paths to super abilities. We're hoping to be able to do this with consciousness radionic machines of some sort in the future. But, you know, once you reach that stage, you're a god. Why even bother staying in this sewer of a reality? So the point is you want to be successful in your personal life, which is just that. It is your personal life and no one else's. You have strengths, you have weaknesses, you have channels to bring things to you and not. So the point is, is that uh, all of that is uh, reality. So that has to be done um, to uh, empower yourself in the long run. So that's the simple system. You have to follow it. It's a small investment. These are tools that you use literally for the rest of your life, and you must follow these simple systems. If you fall into boredom, if you do things because I have to do this, uh, because this is what it takes to be successful, well, you know, that sets up a negative barrier. When you're dealing with these kind of empowerments, uh, this is very bad to do. You don't want to have any kind of negative thoughts. That means your mind is coming in. Your mind is a sewer. It will assassinate you, your mind. It will make you fail. Keep it out. The other things people need to understand, what is a successful manifestation? Well, it's kind of obvious in some ways, but how do things happen? You concentrate them into reality? No, you don't. You do have to do uh, these uh, occult gym practices, visualization, etc. And these are done on a semi-concentration level. It's not really a kind. The more you concentrate, the more you're going to fail. So when you're sensing something that you can't see to figure out its shape, its color, you're not concentrating on it. You're sensing. Sensing and concentration are convenient. When you concentrate, you're using the mind for a common world task. And uh, that is required for idiot tasks, driving your car, schoolwork, job, etc. You got to concentrate to a degree. And most people don't concentrate too well, especially when they drive and everything else. You're kind of on autopilot. I won't get into that right now. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that when you're manifesting, things just pop into your head. And this is very hard to describe and tell people. So when you're sensing something, uh, s uh, sensing a shape or a color or whatever it may be, um, it pops into your head. You don't concentrate on it. You don't think, in a, well, this is a round item. So it's a round disc, let's say. So then you piece it together with your common mind. Oh, round, it means round. And you're looking at round, yeah, round like a coin, round like a tire. This is what the mind does. And this is counterproductive. When you sense something, it pops into your mind. Circle, round, red. That's it. Not, ooh, what is this? No, that's concentration. That doesn't work. So you got to understand that uh, advanced abilities do not con uh, con are not confined to or conform to normal thinking processes. Now, this is very hard to understand. It's something that uh, I've recently uh, trying to explain to people and have kind of recently understand myself in terms of, well, it's not concentration. You know, everybody tells you meditate, concentrate, do all this stuff. No, these are mind things. Now, there is a, pr there is a certain aspect where you have to focus, sense, different than concentrate. When we concentrate, you're thinking of I'm concentrating. Your muscles are tightening. You're forcing something to happen. You're, no, it's not like that. So, what you are doing is just getting into the process and letting it flow to you. So, 
uh, people have found that in terms of manifesting, and what's very interesting is they found with uh, ayahuasca and other hallucinogen type things, that your brain is not functioning at high levels. You're, you're not having huge amounts of synapses firing and all this stuff going on, even though you may be perceiving that. No, the brain is actually put in a very lulled out capacity. The brain is releasing everything in a unique and empowered fashion that isn't concentrated. It's not tight and shooting. and all. No, it's the complete opposite. I find that very fascinating because that really does sum it up. So the kind of visions and strange things that you have, you tend to um, be able to um, perceive are not done through your conscious straining mind, your concentrational mind, your mind, anytime your mind comes in, the game is over. Your mind is a sewer that produces nothing but common world tasks. Doing this, doing that, bathing, washing, going to work, drive, this is what the mind's for and it needs to be shut off after that. Once you drive someplace, you ought to shut off your conscious mind and go into your higher self. Perceive your area. Where are you at? What are you getting? What are the new information you need? And then, of course, you switch back into, well, ooh, gee, I have to deal with this. I have to deal with that. And this is, again, mind stuff. But in between all that, you want to be shifting back into your higher self. So hopefully all of this has gotten through people. This is the secrets to do. This is the path you go on. When you go on this path, you are assured. You are guaranteed to reach levels of empowerment. Now, as I said, it would be nice that everybody could be made into a genius. And are they in everything? You go to school and you're a master whatever. Well, people should look at all the people who are thrown out of medicine, thrown out of law, even in that horrible system, because they don't do things right, because they don't get it. So we get into all these things that are out there, and what we have is a complete uh, screw-up of life, because you don't get it. So you fail. But if you follow the right systems, believe me, if you go out and shoot baskets every day from the free throw line, you will get good at shooting baskets. It's impossible not to. Will you become a great, how many, if you shoot baskets every day, how many will you hit out of, let's say, 50 shots? Well, initially, you don't do too good. If you do it every day for a year, you're probably going to be getting 40 of those in. That would be considered almost expert level. Can you get 50 in? I don't know. That's up to you. And it has nothing to do with the training system. It has to do, are you able to put the final piece together to become a master? But you've got to do the other work. But you have to know. Somebody has to tell you to do that. You have to have the right tools. You have to use the right books. This is just the training system of everything. So it's not complicated. It doesn't cost a lot. It's all there. And your success to... Uh, to a high level is pretty much guaranteed. Follow the system, you're going to achieve that. If you want to become a master or an expert, well, that's going to take a little bit of extra work. And of course, we can guide you there and assist you. And there's so many things you can do to go on to that next level. It also depends, do you want to spend the time to do it? Do you want to do the studies? Do you want to invest in certain things? Do you want to go through the proper processes? Well, you know, that's what it takes to be an expert. Nobody is a master at anything because they're just good. Olympic athletes uh, work out six days a week, generally. Every day they're working out for God knows how many hours. Well, they're already masters. Why do they have to do that? Well, they're trying to become the master of all. So it doesn't matter whether you're good at something. You need to continually practice it. That's the weakness of the human mind and consciousness. Now, if you switch over into your higher self, you're going to become that master if you know what you're doing. But like everything else, you want to be the best of the best. You want to have these super abilities. Well, you're going to have to go on to the next level. And that means there's another level of dedication and practice you have to do. But that's really not essential. Being an expert is pretty damn good. Being a master, is it worth the trouble? Well, that's a personal um, 
choice you have to make and what you want to do in your life and do you have the time do you have the energy do you really care to spend that extra time i always try and make things very simple and easy to achieve uh, by understanding that you know even if you have a lot of time during the day and you can spend more times in your practices are you going to do it life is too distracting there's too much out there there's too much going on you live in confused environment do you really want to spend that time training and it's very difficult to do these things on your own if you don't have a support this is another problem you know one thing i listened to recently which i'll close with here is the fact that um a noted physicist was talking about his process of going through his educational um process and he did quite well in average schools your average um, colleges universities in your state and all these schools are pretty good basically but they're at a certain level what he stated is that when he finally went to harvard that everything changed now was it the actual school itself and what they taught well not really because the teachings are pretty similar whether it's in a state college or whether it's at harvard the difference was is that the people in those classes and i noted this in my educational the people who are active who are educated who are um, smart make your experience and bring you up with them so if you have somebody performing in your class that is making interesting comments that is excited about they make you interesting they bring you up and this is the one failure when you're working alone and while you're not in a group is you don't have other people to talk to you don't have people to commune with you're not getting the good ideas from others that's why communication is so important and one of the problems with internet reality if you're not speaking with people consistently and having discussions there is a particular problem here we hope in the future to set up some sort of skyping discussion groups where people get together and meet this would be a great way to just talk about everything and people to put in their own two sets um, for people to share what they know and everybody has something interesting to share uh, if they think about it and they may and everyone comes up with something kind of interesting and different that you may not even think of at all I find this all the time that certain things I just never even considered that someone else did and this is what you grab onto this is what you grab onto put into your system and you move ahead with it and if everybody does it so the energy that has gotten from a higher intellectual dedicated group of people who have gotten to a place because they're quote special is priceless and that's one of the things that uh, all of this training no matter whom you go to lack a online discussion group where people are typing in is not good enough nor is it a proper way to communicate because you can't express things in writing to the degree that you need to so you need to have physical or not physical but at least uh, audio communication people have to talk to each other it would be nice if everybody could get together but these things just don't happen you can't get people together to do anything in a group period and this has been going on uh, for many many years people don't show up even in big cities you won't get a lot of people to show up unless the speaker is a very popular virtually world-renowned person so uh, all of this is um, very very difficult so it doesn't matter where you are New York Los Angeles the general turnout for somebody who's quasi known is probably 20 to 30 people these are in cities of millions tens of millions Los Angeles County has 20 million people in it and you get 30 people to show up well that's very typical now if you're a celebrity of some sort Shirley MacLaine so many other people well you're gonna get thousands possibly to show up for you but even thousands is kind of a small amount of people in a city that has 20 million in it so this is the nature of things so getting people together is difficult I think that the bridging of this would be uh, getting together in some sort of a discussion group a skyping thing where many people get together you have multiple people and they talk about all this stuff you talk about what you found you talk about um, uh, as one intellectual equal to another of your opinions 
And all of this is important. You found something that works for you. Maybe that can work for somebody else. But the bottom line is, is that this is the great missing in the new technological age. And uh, this is changing a bit because of the uh, health climate right now that people are now communicating more uh, through these kind of Skype type things. And we're going to have to learn how to use this uh, to communicate better because people aren't close to each other anyway. Everybody loves to go to conferences, events, conventions, etc., because you have that physical energy there. But, you know, doing something like that once or twice a year is not really very effective, and they tend to be strained and tiring. Uh, but you do get to see somebody close up. You Maybe you have dinner with them, talk with them. All this is part of the process and can be very valuable, but it is still stressed. I believe this could be overcome if people relax through the communication process. Uh, you see each other uh, on uh, your screens. There's multiple people, and everybody talks and communicates. This could be a great way to move it up. And this is something that uh, I have seen in my own life, is that if you get in with a group of excited people that are active in that particular field, uh, you are then able to um, be able to generate a high energetic degree that causes the opening of channels that brings information to you. You're stimulating an entire vortex, which you are sucking to you higher intellectual uh, and empowerment information just by the process of it. So this cannot be underestimated in something that is highly lacking right now. As I said, we're trying to do this with Patreon and other areas to actually be able to um, handle these things uh, to a degree of getting everybody's input. The input of what's going on, the input of uh, drawing energies to them and having this stimulation. So uh, when you get a group of very smart people together, as you'll get with a, the very selected group you get at Harvard or Yale, well, this is not going to compare to the group that you get at your state college. They're just not the same people. These are people who have come from all over the world. So there's a great degree there of possible empowerment. Now, the drawback, of course, is there's also a possible degree of a bunch of boobs getting together that have nothing new to add. But, you know, that's all part of life as well. So you want to seek out, hopefully, those that uh, are those intellectually stimulating people. The point is, if you live in your own book, if you live through my lectures, if you're living through our material or anybody else's, and this is your communication level, well, you're missing a lot, and you're missing the major breakthrough that personal communication can give you. Well, hopefully this has got through to everybody. Hopefully uh, this has been a fantastic help. This is the reality, people. This is everything right now, and you need to understand this. You need to play this several times. This is the core. This is the secret. Everybody's always like, well, what do I do to make... Here it is. It's all laid out to you. Until next time.